Elisabeth Turk Olbjörn. I'm the Vice President of Account Management here in ABB Norway. Thank you for stopping in to listen to our session on upstream digitalization, how sustainable. This session was planned for Sarah Week, but due to the cancellation of the event, we were not able to join you in Houston. In an attempt to stay connected during these difficult times and share our insights on key thought leadership topics, we have decided to bring you our version of a virtual Sarah Week. We hope you leave a comment on the recording or reach out to us afterwards to let us know your thoughts on today's conversation. And with that, I will introduce our speaker before we jump into a discussion where we explore how the upstream sector is sustaining digitalization activities in today's market. I am joined here today by Per-Erik Holsten. He is the Managing Director for ABB in Norway. The need for greater operational efficiency in the ENP industry remains important while companies adapt to increased remote working models. The challenges of abundant energy supply and global GHG reduction targets continue to impact how operators plan for the future while ensuring business continuity. Digital transformation is merely table stakes for organizations that want to continue to participate in this market environment. Now, Pedetic, given the current situation and the increased need to support operations remotely, how do you see digitalization accelerating or changing the way we deliver projects? Hi, Elizabeth. Happy to join you here on Microsoft Teams. Uh, and it's an important topic, definitely. Uh, we see already now uh, a lot of companies investing in digital technologies and really embracing digital technologies, not only for the purpose of profit improvement and cost cutting, but also for the purpose of uh, productivity improvement, uh, better health and safety measures, uh, avoiding traffic, avoiding uh, sometimes uh, long air, air um, tra or airplane rides and so on. So I think there is, a, there is a key element in digital which is not only about uh, cost cutting and profit improvement. No, that said, I mean, these times of COVID-19 has shown us that we can utilize a lot of digital technologies also uh, for remote services and remote application to keep uh, pro production stable and making sure that uh, uh, we keep ourselves uh, health and safe in these times. Uh, so it has really underlined the point of uh, that digital services are here to stay. Uh, and there are lots of examples we as ABB have used in these times where we have used digital technologies not only to support our customers in their production but also support our customers in, for example, testing where we have been sitting in our laboratory uh, with our testing facilities and the customer has been connecting into Microsoft Teams and we have done the FAT or the test remotely. Uh, so it has been a fantastic uh, signal of how we can do and use uh, digital technologies to work in a different way. Now obviously with that comes uh, maybe different work processes and so on. So I, I think there is, a, there is a, uh, in these times we have really proven that digital technologies has a benefit. And, and that said, I think we see also some of the energy companies in the industries are having significantly cost or significant cost savings uh, with use of digital technologies. BP recently came out with a cost saving from 150 to 50 million dollars, meaning 100 million dollars cost savings uh, for drilling wells in West Africa. Uh, so by using digital technology. So you have those examples as well where you have uh, profit uh, earnings creeping upwards because of using digital technologies. You have better and stable uh, production. You have uh, better productivity at uh, sites and plants. And you have the remote operation where you can provide uh, support and technical expertise support from remote without flying uh, service engineers into site, which may take uh, 12 hours, right? So, so these type of uh, things are here to stay. I'm 100% convinced about that. And now it's really how do we actually uh, make the journey more important to our customers and to the industry itself. So the journey can really take advantage of this new era of digital technologies. So will companies achieve greater efficiency and digitalization through culture or technology? 
Well, I, I think it's a mix. Uh, I think uh, if you look at the culture itself, obviously the work processes and the digital ecosystem has to be built in order to provide the benefits. And it will change maybe to a certain extent the way we work together, the way we connect together, uh, the way we uh, link up between each other uh, and the way we do services. Uh, so that will that will probably uh, to watch uh, the next, uh, let's say, era of the industry, uh, we will have to adapt to new work processes and new work methodologies. So that's the cultural part. And getting used to it will probably take a little while, right? Uh, some companies are in early adoption stage and some com companies are further advanced. So people are uh, in different adoption stages, uh, but this will come, I'm 100% convinced. And when it comes to the benefits, we already see them, as I mentioned in my previous example, the benefits are uh, already there. So now it's really about how do we move into getting the benefits out of the system. Uh, and I think if you look at operational efficiency, it can, uh, uh, yeah, you can optimize performance. Uh, you can, uh, you have project examples where we have, for example, 99% uptime uh, compared to an in industry standard, which is significantly lower. Uh, and that's 60% less site services. So we're already working remote with some of our customers. Uh, basically sitting providing the expertise uh, services that we normally provide at site. We are sitting in our regular offices or even from home. And by that you can provide the 24-7, 365 type of service that the customers are in need of. Uh, rather than now having a 12-hour gap between from you fly, fly out uh, till you end up at site being able to perform the job. So these benefits are, are already there. And we also see typical performance examples where you can have early detections of a probable shutdown or a probable equipment failure, uh, where you can detect early and you can basically say, hey, in 12 hours we see a problem with this piece of equipment and you should go and correct it and maintain it before the problem actually occurs. So these examples are already there. Uh, and I'm also here convinced that as we get further in the technology evolution of digital services and digital applications, uh, more and more will be taken into use and we will also together uh, between uh, customers and end users in the industry and the supplier base in the industry, in the industry learn more and more. And eventually there will be a kind of a complete ecosystem of digital services, digital application that will be to the benefit of the industry itself to the supplier base, but I also think there is a benefit to sustainability itself. So you get that out of it as well, where you have uh, environmental benefits and uh, getting greener technology and these type of things, which will be uh, which to a certain extent is a chance for the industry itself today. From the examples you provided here, Pedetic, do you think the digitalization is definitely sustainable? And we are accelerating the adoption of digitalization. But where are we in this journey? I think companies are in different stages, as I mentioned. Um, so you would see the maturity of different companies in different stages. And it's not maybe not so much about the maturity anymore. I think uh, most companies that I see out there and most of our customers in AVB are already taking digital to heart. Uh, so from that perspective, the, uh, the willingness and the eagerness to drive digitalization within uh, the customer base is already there. Now, there is obviously a part of the picture is how to make sure that you do this in a risk-free fashion. So how do you move forward with the right amount of speed and the right of amount of technology utilization where you don't put at jeopardy your uh, production, your, your integrity of the plant, uh, your ability to have the right uptime and not at least uh, the health and safety aspect of our industry. So that will determine a little bit how fast you can go and how uh, fast willing or how willing our customers are uh, moving forward. Now that said, I mean, uh, there is already 
uh, far advanced customers and there are less advanced customers and we're all we're talking about the journey uh, what we have called in ABB towards autonomous right and we call it towards autonomous because we, we don't think it's really a one step or a two step process it's really a journey where we have to work together uh, as an industry to provide the best practices and best uh, the solutions to solve the, the industry's uh, problems. So uh, it will, we are still in my opinion, uh, in most cases uh, relatively early in the adoption of digital. It will be more and more over the coming years. I think maybe now with COVID-19 we may see an acceleration uh, because there has been, uh, as I said, underlined the need for using remote services and these type of applications. Uh, and we already have uh, proof cases and examples where we see the benefits coming out. Uh, so those will spread rather quickly. Uh, and then uh, when it coming to the more uh, advanced stuff, meaning a full autonomous type of operation, it will take longer time. And we will probably see the less risk-based part of the industry adapting earlier than the other parts of the industries. So. Uh, still some years to go, but uh, what we see is that our customers are extremely curious, interested, and willing to work together with us uh, as a company, um, uh, making sure that they take out whatever benefits that can be taken out of, uh, of the uh, digitalization. So is there a best practice to build digital capabilities and make it sustainable? Yeah, I, I think there is one best practice which I can recommend to all and that is basically to get started. Uh, I Meaning you have to start to uh, adapt something, start to, even if it's relatively small, start with something so you get up to speed and start to build your ecosystem. Uh, setting up the backbone uh, for having the right capacity of data streaming, having the right capacity of uh, data crushing and data anal analysis. Uh, and making sure that you have that up and running and then start with something which is meaningful to you as a business. Uh, and then eventually as a part of uh, that process you have to rethink your work processes and your procedures and making sure that you get more virtualized in your operations and in your uh, operational procedures. Uh, we have seen very good examples of uh, saving lots of engineering hours. Uh, we have seen good examples of early production, meaning that you have a planned production 40 days later. Now we're seeing that the production is starting up 40 days earlier. We have seen great examples of uh, very high uptime up on uh, our plants. Uh, we have seen great examples of uh, less manual interventions, so that meaning that you automate the interventions rather than pushing the buttons and typing the keyboard, but it's all automated so it goes more smoothly and it's quicker and it's faster and you reap the benefits out of that. And then I think based on that, you start to build your experience. So you start with something that is meaningful. Uh, then you start to measure the output of those applications or those processes that you're implementing and start to see does it really give, give us the benefits that we have, uh, have calculated and then basically you build from there. So if I would recommend something, just start. And if you prefer to start with us as ABB, that's obviously what uh, we would like as well. So we are here to support you and make sure that you, we help our customers and, and the industry in general. All right, so thank you, Pererik, uh, for sharing your thoughts and insights. Uh, as we continue to navigate through these challenging times, it is increasingly important to keep an open dialogue and learn from others in our industry. 